Another Thursday, another set of new Switch games for all of you. Today we've got seven of them, six are brand new releases, and one is a release date update for a cool title. Now, I have to mention that one of these games was announced and released on the same freaking day, which has to be a Switch record of sorts. I don't know of any other title that gets the press release announcement and the press release launch on the exact same day, but we'll get into that in a second. Last week was our favorite lineup of Thursday Switch games probably ever, because it included The Outer Worlds, which was a huge third-party surprise announcement. It had a little bit of Lego action and even had some Garfield kart racing. This week doesn't have any fat cats, but it does have some cool titles, so let me know in the comments down below which one you're most looking forward to and why. I'd love to hear from you. And hit that like button if you enjoy being kept up to date on the latest Switch announcements and new titles coming to your system. Now, it's just me this week. Gabe, as I mentioned in a different video, uh, is off handling some family matters. Hopefully, he'll be back in time for next week's show. Good vibes to Gabe. Uh, and let's get into the Switch titles. We're going to start with Trine 4, which I've been looking forward to for a long time. It's our release date update, and it's coming to Switch on October the 8th. They're also putting out the Trine Ultimate Collection on the exact same day, and that bundle houses Trine 1 through 4, a soundtrack, an art book, well it's a digital art book, uh, a reversible cover sheet for the physical version, and a physical Trine 4 world map. Now you can get this bundle digitally, um, but then I guess you lose out on the physical stuff. The game is going to be... Uh, the game that you want, though, is going to be Trine 4. That one looks super cool. It is a return to form for the franchise, which started off super strong. They they got a little bit carried away in Trine 3. That one went with full 3D environments. It took forever to develop. It cost a ton of money. But Trine 4 is back to the 2.5D gorgeous co-op puzzle platforming action that you probably remember and probably love, honestly, from Trine 1 and 2. Interestingly, it still has the same three characters, but it says four-player co-op. So not sure exactly how that works. When person is a duplicate character? Is there a hidden fourth character? Not sure. These games typically have been three-player co-ops, uh, but now it's four-player co-op. But I'm definitely going to be grabbing this. October 8th, a good date for the game, uh, and a very pretty and fun-looking time. Now, it's also a fun time to cook with your mama, or at least with Cooking Mama, and the series is making its debut on Switch, apparently. We don't have an official announcement yet, but Cooking Mama Cookstar has shown up on the Australia ratings board and the Germany ratings board. Um, apparently the German rating specifically says Switch, the Australian rating says a multi-platform, uh, but it seems like this is going to happen. There was a Cooking Mama title for 3DS in 2017, that one was Sweet Shop, so it would be really nice to get an update in this franchise. I'm a humongous uh, Overcooked fan. That's like one of my favorite Switch games and honestly one of my favorite multiplayer games all in all. So maybe I will dip my toes into Cooking Mama. Surprise, I haven't played it ever. Well, no, that's not true. I think I did play one of the DS versions way, way back and I remember now liking it. I'm sure things have changed a lot since that first initial release. Uh, it says that there's seven games, uh, which is pretty darn cool on Nintendo platforms. So uh, this would be the eighth title. And uh, that's that's something to write home about, I think. Eight titles for Cooking Mama. I bet they didn't believe that Cooking Mama would get that crazy when they first announced it. But hopefully it is revealed officially. Hopefully it gets an official date. And hopefully we're playing it pretty soon. Now this one would be the biggest deal. And this one would be worthy of its own video if not for some of the specifics. I'm talking about this new Rabbids game uh, that is coming to Switch. It's not Mario Plus Rabbids 2. It's a Rabbids only game but it looks like it is a China exclusive. Now, as you know, Nintendo is working really hard uh, with Tencent to get the Switch rolling in China, and it seems like they have worked with Ubisoft to, to do something exclusive. Now, Nintendo's name isn't anywhere on this, but I'm sure they've had discussions, and it's a very Journey to the West-themed Rabbids game. It does look like it'll have uh, the, the typical minigame action that the Rabbids games have had in the past, so it's not going with the sort of a strategy gameplay that we saw in Mario Plus Rabbids, it says that they'll be traveling back and forth through time and space, ending up in China. Now, unfortunately, I don't think it is going to be released here. Um, they're saying it's it would be called Rabbids Party in English. It's for all ages, solo or up to four players. 
And this new game builds towards Ubisoft's ambition of creating meaningful experiences for Chinese players. So I don't think we're ever gonna get it. It's a little odd, because I feel like a regular old Rabbids title would do pretty well on Switch. For all uh, six of you that are waiting for the 1-2 Switch sequel, this would be your cup of tea perfectly. Um, but maybe we can just grab it off the eventual Chinese store? Not exactly sure how that will work if it... It should be possible, though. You can grab games from every other region. I just don't know since they have some strict rules over there. But this one does look interesting. Sadly, most of us will probably never play it. But you can play PictoQuest, and you can play PictoQuest The Cursed Grids now. This is the game that was announced and released on the exact same day. August 8th saw the announcement and the release date of this Picross meets RPG title. Uh, it looks pretty cool, honestly. I like Picross. I, I just wish Nintendo would do one. I love Pokemon Picross on the 3DS. That's such a fun time. And they're very, you know, you gotta be into numbers and you gotta kind of be into like Sudoku or things of that sort, crossword puzzles. But there's like a relaxing, calming nature to things like this. They're so just cerebral, but at the same time kind of just like repetition and soothing and, and there's little aha moments as you figure them out. I don't know, I like them. And it looks interesting that it is mixing in light RPG elements. It kind of reminds me um, of like a, a mobile title in that way, um, but it, it looks solid and you can grab it at $9.99, but it has an $8.49 launch sale, saving you a buck fifty, uh, at least over here in the States, if you're interested in grabbing it. A beloved indie title, Far Lone Sales, is coming out on August the 18th. This one's a really interesting experience. It's hard to like understand the game exactly just from, well, the Switch trailer itself isn't very thorough, but even looking at screenshots, it's like, what exactly do you do? And it's a puzzle platformer where you're maintaining a ship, a ship with sails, and keeping that ship rolling. Uh, so it's got different elements where you're making sure that your ship is good, but then also stepping outside of your ship to do some puzzle solving action uh, on foot. It, it's pretty freaking cool and it reminds me a lot of like a cross between lovers in a dangerous space time and inside probably not as dark or as memorable as inside but it does have very good reviews it's a short experience only about two hours or so it's gonna be fifteen dollars which it's not a steep price in the grand scheme of things but for just a couple hours maybe it is a steep price i, I know it's really loved i haven't had a chance to play it so i'm gonna check it out when it comes out uh, and try to maintain my beautiful and, and kind of falling apart vessel upgrading it along the way to solve these puzzles and explore what looks like a very serene but beautiful world. This next game isn't so beautiful at all, but it could be cool. It is in our favorite genre, the roguelite genre. It's called Bite the Bullet, and the twist here is that you eat your enemies. After you defeat them with different guns that you craft and unlock, you eat them and eventually can turn into a powerful zombie that they're calling the uh, Zombro form. You get to customize your character, customize your weapons. Obviously, there's lots of loot. Um, there are food-based classes. So you've got like vegetarians, you've got blood-soaked gorivores. Uh, it depends, I guess, on what you eat. Your body changes, which is, is really cool. So that neat mechanic seems to have a lot of implications. I will say that it doesn't look... I don't know, the attacks don't look satisfying. There's something about the animations and the way that the hit detection appears in the trailer that doesn't look super satisfying, so that has me worried, but it's one worth checking out. It'll be at PAX West, and it's coming out in 2020. I hope that it controls and plays good, because I kind of oddly like this idea of eating the enemy corpses to then evolve slash change your body and then create a new type of class slash character based on what you choose to eat. That's just like a nifty idea, uh, and I'm always down for a really good roguelike, and there's like a million of them, so hey, maybe this one will be the one to stand out for you. Next up, and finally, we have Still There, which is a really interesting mix. It's a psychological adventure title, um, kind of an adventure game of sorts, but it's got this interesting blend of, like the trailer is very calm and makes it seem like it's gonna be this very serious affair. They even say in the copy uh, that it'll be dealing with complex issues such as depression and grief and a deeply immersive narrative. But at the same time, it says that it's incredibly funny and has dark humor uh, and kind of like goofy. You are trying to maintain your space lighthouse by solving brain bending puzzles and completing daily tasks urine may be involved. So we've got copy that literally goes from 
complex issues such as depression and grief to urine may be involved. I feel like that is going to be a very difficult balance to strike, but if hit well, it could be interesting. Uh, they claim it's weird, sarcastic, dark, metaphysical, complex, and more, brimming with strong emotions, humor, and things that might break your heart. Uh, I hope that doesn't mean from grossness or corniness, cringiness, but instead actually something interesting and, and important. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Still There is coming out later this year. That'll do it for the new Switch games this Thursday. Let me know in the comments down below which one you're most pumped for. I think it's a, a pretty easy pick. Trine 4 does look really good. As I mentioned, it's a return to form, and I like that franchise save for three. I wish the Rapids Party title was coming to America or somewhere in the West, but it doesn't seem like it will. And it's interesting that Ubisoft and the Rabbids team decided to create a, a Chinese-specific entry in the franchise because I, I, I don't know. I feel like with the Switch Lite, like maybe a Rabbids game could do well, but maybe this is just kind of a, a testing ground and, and perhaps we will get either Mario plus Rabbids 2 or a different Rabbids game at some point in the future. I'll be back in the future with another list next week. Until that time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Hope you had a fantastic day. Let me know your favorite in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoy these weekly updates. And for myself, the Chinese Rabbids, and that dude in Bite the Bullet that eats his corpses. Switch Force, out.